Hi everybody, welcome to my tutorial on how to trace images using paint.net. The method I'm going to use is very simple. This tutorial is intended for people who are not very familiar with photo editing software. The technique I'm going to demonstrate can be easily done in other software packages such as Adobe Photoshop or Krell. Basically, image editing software that allows you to work in layers. To get started, I'm going to grab an image off the internet. So I'm going to just copy this awesome looking maple leaf. I'm going to go to paint.net and I'm going to open a brand new canvas. So I'm going to go to file, new, and paint.net is really great in that it will automatically calculate a canvas size that matches the last image that you just copied. So I'm just going to hit OK and insert my image. Now we're going to be working in layers. So we want to open the Layers panel. If it's not already open, you can open it by going to the icon at the top right corner. And you'll see if you hover it over, there is, it's listed as Layers. And if you click on that, we see we have one layer that we're currently working with, the background image. What we want to do is add a transparent layer on top of that. And we can do this by going down and clicking on the icon with the green arrow. So there we have a second transparent layer. Now whenever you're working with layers, it's very important to make sure you have the correct layer highlighted. Otherwise you could do edits to other areas, other layers that you didn't want change. For example, I could highlight background and then any changes I make will actually destroy the original image, which is not my intention. So I'm going to make sure that layer two is highlighted. Now we can begin tracing. One of the tools I find is very useful is the paintbrush, which you can see over here in the left panel. So I select this paintbrush, and I need to choose how big of a brush I want. So if you go up to brush width, there's a drop down menu. You can choose different widths. This one would be a little too large for the purposes of tracing this leaf. So let's choose a smaller brush. How about a size three? You can choose the color of what you want to trace. You can open your color palette. Again, go to the top right corner, open your color circle, and choose the color you want to be working with. So today, let's work with a nice dark gray. So now we can begin tracing. Now, how accurate your trace is is totally dependent on what you need. In some cases, the tracing that I'm demonstrating, although it's really sloppy, it might actually be good enough for your purpose. Most things that I'm tracing have to be a lot crisper than this. So to get a more accurate trace, I recommend zooming in. So you select the zoom by just clicking on this icon with a magnifying glass and zoom in to a level of detail that you have more accurate control over your cursor. So again, we choose our paintbrush, and now you see it's a lot easier to rapidly trace along the image edges. Now you probably don't want to watch me trace out this entire image. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open an image that I've already finished tracing. Here we go. And now we just need to figure out how to get rid of the background. There's two easy ways to do this. One, you select the layer that's listed background and you delete it. Now, if you're gonna delete the background, you gotta be pretty certain that you've got all the information you want out of it. I don't recommend deleting the background. Instead, what I recommend doing is simply unchecking that layer so it's no longer visible. Now we can save our image. So if you go up to File, Save as. You'll see that the default file format in paint.net is a PDN. And this is a format where it's going to save all your files. So you can come back and change your layers at a later time. And I highly recommend doing this. So give it a file name that you're happy with and save. Now that format is not going to be very useful if you're importing it into other programs. So in this case, I'm going to save the image as a JPEG. 
and save. Usually the default quality um, works for my purposes. And it's going to ask you to flatten that. So all you have to do is click on that. And you're going to see you lose all the layers in this particular saved file. Now remember, the PDN file that you have still has all those same layers. Now that we have our image, we can easily insert it into other documents. So there we have it, the trace of our image. Thank you for joining this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful.